A man walking along a California beach was deep in prayer. All of a sudden, he said out loud, Lord, please grant me one wish. Suddenly, the sky above his head clouded, and a booming voice said, because you have tried to be faithful to me in all ways, I will grant you one wish. The man said, please, Lord, build me a bridge to Hawaii so I can drive over any time I need to see the beautiful sights and alleviate the stress in my life. The Lord said, your request is very materialistic. <laughs> Think of the logistics of that kind of undertaking the supports that it would, be, it would take to reach the bottom of the Pacific, the concrete and steel it would take. I can do it, but it's hard for me to justify your desire for worldly things. Take a little more time and think of another wish. You know, one that would truly evoke my almighty power of blessing. The man thought for it, about it for a long time, and then finally, he said, Lord, I wish I could understand women. <laughs> I want to know how they really feel, what they are thinking when they give you the silent treatment, or why, what, uh, uh, why they cry, and, and when they say, oh, it's nothing, and most important, how can I make a woman really happy? After a few moments, God said, you want two lanes or four <laughs> lanes on that bridge? <laughs> I can get away with that because I'm a woman. <laughs> Today, I'd like to remind you gently of who we truly are and remind you of the unlimited possibilities when we tap into our core. We are more than this physical body and the conditions that we face. We are more than what we see in the mirror or more than our IQs. We are spiritual beings, a part of God. Our true essence is divine stuff. We have everything we need within us because we are divine emanations of God. We came from the infinite. Therefore, all the attributes that exist in the mind of God are within us right here and right now. Just as a drop of ocean water contains all the elements of the ocean, yet it is not the entire ocean. We are made in the image and likeness of the creator. Therefore, we are co-creators, creating what we want to experience. Remember, Dr. Mark said a few weeks ago, we are that big, infinite, godly spirit. And he also said, we are not limited beings. We are unique, individualized expressions of God. If you are experiencing a health challenge, or if you feel you are in a rut personally or professionally, or experiencing lack or limitation financially, maybe there's a skinny cow in your life. Once upon a time in a faraway land, there lived a Chinese wise man and his disciple. One day in their travels, they saw a hut in the distance. As they approached, they realized that it was occupied in spite of its extremely poor appearance. In that desolate place, there were no crops, no trees, and a man lived with his wife, young children, and a thin, tired cow. Since they were hungry and thirsty, the, the wise man and his disciple stopped for a few moments, and they were well received. At one point, the wise man asked, this is a very poor place, far away from anything. How do you survive? You see that cow? 
That's what keeps us going, said the head of the family. She gives us milk. Some of it we drink, and some of it we make into cheese. When there is extra, we go into the city and exchange it for other types of food. That's how we survive. The wise man thanked them for their hospitality and left. When he reached the first bend in the road, he said to his disciple, go back, get the cow, take her to the cliff in front of us, and push her off. The disciple could not believe what he was hearing. I cannot do that, master. How can you be so ungrateful? The cow is all they have. If I throw it off the cliff, they'll have no other way to survive. Without the cow, the cow they'll surely die. The wise man said, he took a deep breath and he repeated the order. Go ahead, push the cow off the cliff. Though outraged at what he was being asked to do, the student was resigned to obey his master. He returned to the hut, quietly led the animal to the edge of the cliff and pushed. The cow fell down the cliff and died. As the years passed by, remorse for what he had done never left the disciple. One spring day, the guilt became too much to bear, and he left the wise man and returned to the little shack. He wanted to find out what had happened to that family, to help them out, to apologize, to somehow make amends. Upon returning, he rounded the turn in the road, and he could not believe his eyes. He couldn't believe what his eyes were showing him. In place of the poor shack, there was a beautiful house with trees all around, a swimming pool, several cars in the garage, a satellite dish, <laughs> and on and on. These three, there were three good-looking teenagers and their parents celebrating their first million dollars. The heart of the disciple froze. What could have happened to the family? Without a doubt, they must have been starving to death and forced to sell their land and leave. At that moment, the student thought they must be all begging on the street corners of some city. He approached the house and asked a man that was passing by about the whereabouts of the family that had lived there several years ago. You're looking at it, said the man, pointing to the people gathered around the barbecue. <laughs> Unable to believe what he was hearing, the disciple walked through the gate and took a few steps closer. He walked to the pool where he recognized the man from several years before. Only he was strong and confident. The man was happy. His wife was happy. The children were now nice-looking teenagers. He was dumbfounded and went over to the man and asked, what happened? I was here with my teacher a few years ago, and this was a miserable place. There was nothing. What did you do to improve your lives in such a short time? The man looked at the disciple and replied with a smile, we had a cow that kept us alive. She was all we had. But one day, she fell off the cliff and died. To survive, we had to start doing other things, develop skills we didn't know we had. And so, because we were forced to come up with new ways of doing things, we are now much better off than before. I know you get the moral of the story. Sometimes our dependency on something small and limited is the biggest obstacle to our growth. Perhaps the best thing that could happen to you is to push your cow down the cliff. Once you free yourself of the thought that it's little, but it's certain, or the idea that I'm not doing great, 
but there are other people who are much worse than me, then your life will really change. Is there a skinny cow in your life keeping you miserable? Ernest Holmes says, in every situation, God is present, active, and all-powerful. And as you open to God's unlimited potential that is operating in us, as us, and through you, you can shift any experience. The same power that moves mountains and creates galaxies is available to you simply by acknowledging it. We are unlimited because we are spiritual beings. Our essence is divine stuff. We are a collection of molecules and particles as we explore our existence in human form. When you feel challenged with a health, financial issue, or relationship issue, ask yourself, how is God showing itself in this moment? What am I learning? How am I expanding my spirit? When you feel challenged, always remember, nothing is circumstantial or accidental. Ask yourself, how is this situation or circumstance serving me? Remind yourself, it is never the situation, opportunity, experience, or even yourself that you want to change. It is your perspective of it. When you begin to intentionally change your perspective, your physical reality changes. If you are not changing your perspective, you will find yourself repeating patterns over and over again. Even if the players and the geography changes, the circumstance is repeated over and over again. A mistake repeated more than once is a decision, according to Andy Van Dyke. The moment you begin to ask how this now moment is working with you, through you, as you, you have changed your perspective. The circumstances now will change more quickly. The patterns you are in will shift and change. This is how we create, create expansion in our lives and in the world. We are channels for love at all times. We are never outside the energy of God, love, and perfection. About nine months ago, I had the appearance of a health challenge. It made me stop and slow down. I was like one of those in one of the skits in Living Color, the Jamaicans, who were talking to each other when one Jamaican asked the other Jamaican, how many jobs you got, Mon? <laughs> I have 10 jobs. How many jobs do you have, Mon? I have three jobs, Mon. What? Only three jobs? <laughs> that was me. I, w <laughs> I was so busy. It took me a minute to shift my perspective and to see the gifts that this so-called challenge presented me. I shifted to a different rhythm, one of peace, poise, and understanding that wherever I am, God is. I changed my perspective from woe is me to wow. Now I'm in a moment of peace, in a state of peace. And I stopped overdoing and began being. I could feel my soul's expansion, knowing that I am always supported by pure spirit. For this knowing, I am so grateful. Everything is a teaching opportunity when you look at the gifts that it's presenting you. Sometimes a physical challenge will offer you a chance to find a new rhythm, let go of a toxic relationship, 
explore holistic options, or to change your diet. Be still, go within, ask spirit to reveal to you what this experience is asking of you. Ernest Holmes says, there is nothing to heal, only something to be revealed. He also said, we have within us the power, that power that is greater than anything we shall ever contact in the outer, a power that can overcome every obstacle in our life and set us safe, satisfied, and at peace, healed and prosperous, in a new light and in a new life. This is my experience now. Remember the quote, life is 10% what happens to me and 90% of how I react to it. Norman Vincent Peale said, change your thoughts and change your world. Changing our perspective disallows us from the state of victimhood. We are unlimited beings on the pathway of endless unfoldment. There is something within us that is eternal and ever expanding. Get still, listen to your heart. If you have goals that beckon you or a passion for something that you want to do, you can, know that you can. This is God in you pushing forth more of itself so you can do it. If you can see it, you can be it. To quote Napoleon Hill, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. We see this today in the latest technological advances. Every year here at the church, we do our goal setting. This helps us to get clear on what we want our future to represent. When we have a clear vision uh, for our lives, we stop wasting time on things that are not serving our goals or dreams or aspirations. It has been said that Benjamin Franklin was one of the first people ever who documented his goals in life. Now is the time to note where you are and remember your unlimited potential. You can co-create your ideal destination. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. An unknown author said, the time will pass anyway. You can either spend it creating the life you want or spend it living the life you don't want. The choice is yours. One of my favorite motivational speakers, Les Brown, said, and I quote, too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living our fears. And let me not forget one of our greatest spiritual teachers, Ralph Waldo Emerson, the only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. Now, you can release those skinny cows. These skinny cows represent our limited thinking. Another reason we don't achieve our goals is self-doubt. It's that inner voice in our head saying, you can't do this. Or what makes you think you deserve that? And so, in many cases, it holds us back from taking the proper actions to move our lives in a better direction. Don't let the appearance of circumstances or external factors in your life become a glass ceiling or an artificial limit on what you can achieve and who you can be. You can let go of the story about your life. Things like, I'm not educated enough, or I'm too old, or I didn't finish college, or I came from a, a bad background, a poor background. You can let that story go. Perhaps you've heard 
the fable about the Navajo woman who told her grandson the story of the two wolves that live inside us, constantly battling one another. She tells her grandson, one of the wolves is jealous, has envy in his soul, is malicious, and scarcity is his mindset. To that wolf, everything in the world is wrong and unpleasant. He believes that people are mostly bad, things are no good, and that the world is a cold place. As you can imagine, nothing good ever happens for this, this wolf because it is a negative, pessimistic animal, always seeing the things as glass half empty. And then the woman says to her grandson, but you also have a different, more powerful wolf that lives inside you. This wolf has empathy, love, compassion, positivity, and knows it can accomplish anything it puts its heart and soul into. This wolf sees the bright side of everything and constantly sees things as glass half full. And grandson, this wolf is an amazing, powerful wolf that can take you so many amazing places. Then the grandson looks at his grandmother and says, well, which wolf wins the battle, grandma? And she replies, the one you feed, grandson, the one you feed. Which wolf do you feed? Maybe we all have a bad wolf living inside of us and the appearance of some skinny cows. Don't let them erode your confidence. We also have within us the God-given power to change the appearance of our circumstances. First, by acknowledging where we are, and then changing our perspective. Asking, how is this serving me? What am I to learn? Which wolf am I feeding? Do I have a skinny cow? Ask yourself, what is being revealed? And then take action. Action should immediately follow an idea. Every second of every day is a chance to renew, to reinvent, to co-create what you want to experience. Because God is in you, you are a unique expression of the divine. I was watching the Van Jones show, and Oprah Winfrey was on. And he said, what do you say to people who say they want to be like Oprah? She said, lean into the dream that life has for you. Are you following your passion? Do you have a dream that calls to you? Don't forsake your vision for your life and become an unhappy conformist. Embrace your dreams, your heart's desire, and know that you can evolve into whatever you want to be and in the direction that your soul chooses. You are worthy. Some of us have grown up with, and with put downs in this so-called dysfunctional environments where we have heard words said to us like, you're stupid, you're dumb, lazy, ugly, fat. You no longer have to suffer from the memory of hurtful words and you no longer will allow them to dim your enthusiasm for your life's dream. You have the power to disempower any words that cause you negative emotions. Become a guardian over the words that you speak, and especially the words that you put behind I am. Always affirm your well-being with a positive word behind I am. The I am is the God essence of you 
And this will enlarge your vision and diminish that part of you that says, I'm not enough, or there is not enough. What are you affirming behind I am? Which wolf are you feeding? Is there a skinny cow in your life? Before I go, I'd like to leave you with a poem that I wrote 36 years ago. I'm telling my age now. <laughs> because you all know, right, I celebrate my 39th birthday here every year. So I had to be three years old when I wrote it, right? <laughs> it's called You Can. Life is not merely a game of chance. It's yours to shape and mold. You can be whatever you want to be. You have to accept the responsibility. You can stand tall, dare not to fall, persist, insist, and you will win. Use all your tools, get the knowledge for deeper understanding over and over again. To you is given the wisdom and the power to decide. You can't afford to hide. You will eventually be faced with looking inside. There you will see the divine presence within thee and know that you can be whatever you want to be. Don't you see? God is in thee. It's energy to be whatever you want to be. Peace and blessings. Thank you.